All right, so today is our first drive on version 12.6.4, full self-driving for my Hardware 3 Model Y. And I've got to say, the updates have been rolling fairly frequently regarding full self-driving, despite having an older car with Hardware 3. I feel like I went for months without getting any sort of update uh, with my, for my Model Y regarding full self-driving, and now they've been coming almost weekly. So very cool to see these changes being made. Uh, and I've got to say that they've always been made for the better. Now, the drive that we have today uh, is on Roosevelt Boulevard through North Philadelphia, and this is just one of the most grueling drives, in my opinion, in the city. Uh, there's a couple of things wrong with it. First of all, always traffic. Second of all, there's all, all of these lights that you're going to encounter and hit as, you are, uh, as you're driving, so it's stop and go all of the time. I've got to say that that was a fairly nice uh, move right there by the car going around the person driving slow in the left-hand lane. Now, I have the hurry profile turned on here, and I've got the maximum speed set to, what did I set it to, 75. Uh, and we're probably not going to exceed 48 miles an hour. And the reason I say 48 is because the speed limit is 40 miles an hour on Roosevelt Boulevard, and they have speed cameras going all the way down the roadway. Um, this is another thing that really has been great having a Tesla is the speed camera chime. So whenever I am in the car and there's a speed camera coming up, it chimes at me and I can look down at my speed and make sure that I'm going the appropriate speed so that I don't get a ticket. There's just nothing worse than driving, trying to go somewhere, getting a ticket, and then basically wherever you're driving, it now costs a hundred bucks to get there because you've got to pay the ticket. There's no points on your license. There's none of that because they can't prove who's driving but you get a ticket in the mail that you've got to pay online and it is just so annoying. Um, Roosevelt Boulevard is also really strange because you have 12 total lanes. No, yeah, 12 total lanes because there's an express and a local on both sides. So you've got six lanes going one way, six lanes going the other way. So yeah, overall, this is just such a terrible road, which is why I enjoy using full self-driving when I've got to do a commute like this one where I pretty much have to drive the entire stretch of Roosevelt, Roosevelt Boulevard. Now back there, it was a little bit strange. It seemed like it wanted to try to get into the right lane and go a little bit faster to get around the slower traffic in the left lane, although it just ended up putting me right back there. That's the one thing I feel like full self-driving lacks is like the foresight to understand what's going to happen. Like sure, that Mustang up there is driving a little bit faster than the Lexus, but the cars in front of it are driving slower. So I know that if I just want to maintain my speed, I should just stay in this lane and go. I feel like the Tesla can sometimes be a little bit too crafty. It can think that it is going to try to pull a fast one and get around in the right lane when it usually just doesn't really work all that well. <coughs> now, there also might be some times where we take a brief pause here as we're driving because we're going to be hitting a ton of red lights. And again, this is why it's so great to have full self driving. You just kick back and relax and just let the car do all the work for you. Now, I'm going to adjust my speed here so that the maximum speed is 48 miles per hour. That gives us a little bit of a threshold or a little bit of a buffer. There's also a very nice stop right there. I feel like sometimes it can be super abrupt when you when you are driving at, say, your full speed, and then this guy wants to get all the way over and make a left here. He's trying to get all the way over four lanes. That's tough. Um, so usually when you have like an abrupt stop or you have like a uh you're coming up to a vehicle that's completely stopped the car can really be hard on the brakes right there is the first speed camera uh and right now i mean there's really nothing to worry about because i'm not driving and because the car is on full self driving and because there's a ton of traffic so we couldn't even really speed here the way that the speed cameras work is uh you know there's a bunch of signage before they pop up so it'll tell you that the speed limit is being camera enforced, photo enforced. Uh, it'll say that red lights are photo enforced and the uh, camera will pick up anything that goes 10 miles over. I don't know if you just heard that in the background. It's a little bit faint, uh, but that was the first speed camera. Ooh, the car is going to go and try to get in the right lane. And I've got to say that's a little bit bold and ballsy considering the low sun angle behind us. That was a good move because the left lane was stacking up there, but the sun is shining super bright behind me. In fact, you might be able to see my shadow up on the roadway there. 
And I know that full self driving autopilot can really get hung up when the sun is low and uh, you know it's it's right there in the frame. Sometimes it'll say that the camera is actually fully blinded and isn't working because of that. But that was a pretty good move there where we were standstill, popped us out into traffic, and then we shot up ahead. So nice move there by full self driving. Uh, but yeah, this is just like this is just like the perfect scenario for full self driving. Look here up on the map just at all of the red lights we have. One, two, three in a row. And it just keeps going after that. So our drive here is going all the way up Roosevelt Boulevard. You can see all the speed cameras up there. And then we're going to be jumping out for a shoot at a Dunkin' Donuts. I'm photographing the outside of a Dunkin' Donuts that, that has just been renovated. I'm going to go at around the sunset hour uh, to get some cool nighttime shots. If I was the car right now, I'd probably jump into that right-hand lane because there's nobody there. Uh, and I could just shoot up around all of this cluster of cars. But it's deciding it wants to stay here. Now, I have to say, it's really been great getting these updates as of recent to the car for full self-driving. I haven't noticed major updates as I've gotten them. Like, there hasn't been anything crazy that's changed. Um, I will say that the upgrade from... Oh, gosh. I was on 12.1, and then whatever I was on, I eventually went to 12.3.6, and that was a pretty massive change. I felt like the highway driving was really improved from there. Um, and now with version 12.6.4, I really haven't seen much talk about this specific version being as much of a game changer uh, for really any of Tesla's vehicles. And so I'm not anticipating this to be any crazy jump or crazy difference, but it is always cool to kind of jump in and document the very first drive on a new version to see if there's any bugs or changes to pick up. I can tell you that one issue that I've been dealing with for a while is the car hugging the left-hand lane. And I've mentioned this in some previous videos to where the car would hug the left-hand lane so much to the point where it thought it wanted to merge and it would get over into that lane when it maybe wasn't supposed to. So that was definitely one issue, uh, massive lane drift that I kept encountering on 12.3.6. And there's a little chime in the background. Now here with this version, um, you know, I mean, haven't really noticed it, it at all. Uh, and honestly, even with 12.3.6, it happened very uh, rarely, so it wasn't that big of an issue. Now, on this drive, I figured I would talk about the potential purchase of a Cybertruck. Um, so, I guess, what, we're about a little over 10 minutes, or just under 10 minutes into this drive. It should be fairly boring. Uh, you know, this is, again, going to be a lot of stop-and-go traffic. Full self-driving has kind of gotten boring, in my opinion, because of how good it's gotten. I can tell you that up and around this curve, it just continues to slow down so much. Like, this is where a bulk of the traffic is because there's such a massive shopping center right here. But yeah, that's kind of like the gist of these full self-driving videos is these, they've almost turned into podcasts where you kind of call out little moves made by the car here and there because everything has gotten so good with full self-driving. It's really just those edge, those edge cases uh, that are just such anomalies that are kind of weird and happen uh, out of nowhere. Like this right here was just such a nice roll up, such a nice stop. Very enjoyable ride so far with full self-driving. Now, here's the thing about the Cybertruck. I... I've always wanted a truck. I do real estate photography and construction photography. Uh, you know, I'm always flying drones. I'm always on job sites. I'm always doing drone training sessions where I'm hauling around a bunch of gear. So like, I definitely have the need for a truck, but I've always made the Model Y work. It has a ton of room. Uh, I did get the performance model. So the low profile tires and rims, they really can be tough when driving on a construction site that might be dirt or rocks or gravel. So this is definitely not the best car for those scenarios. And a truck is something that I always wanted. This is a nice maneuver around here because that's such a big intersection with very little lines on the road. And the car did a really good job at maintaining its, its uh, drive around that curve. So nice shout out there. But as you can tell, this is an area where it is just wall-to-wall -wall traffic. Um, so a truck is something that I've always wanted. I did get a truck back when I was in college and I started working. It was an old Ranger. Uh, it was a complete piece of crap, but it was awesome to drive. And I loved having a truck. I loved being higher up off the road. I loved cars jumping over. It thinks differently. Hesitation. I guess that kind of works. That was kind of nice. Nice and slow maneuver. Uh, so a truck is something that, you know, I've wanted Tesla to create. And I remember when they did their unveiling of the Cybertruck and they rolled out what it looked like. My mouth was just like, 
dropped and it hit the floor because I thought it was ugly. <laughs> I was like, what? what are they thinking? Why did they do this? Why did they make it look like this? Just overall, I, I knew that it wasn't the truck for me. And slowly but surely, the design grew on me. Like, I was like, okay, this is so different, but it's cool. It's very awesome. It looks like it's out of a movie. It looks like a sci-fi vehicle all around. I mean, you know, after they initially unveiled it and they kind of released the production version of it and they showed off the steer by wire and the 48 volt architecture and the bed uh, outlets and the cool steering wheel. I mean, everything about it really did start to grow on me, kind of like the new Model Y. I mean, the new refreshed Model Y, I thought was the ugliest thing in the beginning, but it's grown on me. Like, I think that tail light looks absolutely awesome, how it shines on the actual body of the vehicle and then down into the ground. So I think that the tail light looks awesome on the Model Y. I think the front light bar looks awesome as well. And so with that same sentiment, both of the designs of these vehicles have really grown on me to the point now where I definitely want to purchase a Cybertruck. So I probably wouldn't be thinking about wanting to purchase a Cybertruck if I didn't have the need for it. I've had the Model Y for four years. I had one Model Y for two years, got rear-ended, totaled, then purchased another one, same exact one, black Model Y performance. Had some slight updates, like this version has like the AMD Ryzen processor and stuff like that. So had some nice subtle updates that really do improve the usability of the car in my mind. Um, but the fact that I can actually make use of the Cybertruck makes me want to purchase the truck even more because I really do want a truck, but I can't get away from Tesla's vehicles. The software is so good. The steering is great. I mean, look, this is might be a controversial topic, but I think the build quality is great. I think that everything about the car is super solid. And I wanted that in a pickup truck, and what do you know? The Cybertruck is that. It's a Tesla. That's a truck that's super rugged, comes with all of the self-driving features, everything like that. So for me, the Cybertruck, in my opinion, is the way to go for my next vehicle. Also, just personally, I'm getting a little bit tired of the Model Y. I've had it for four years. It's been the same thing every day I get in the car. So I want something that's just a little bit different. And I feel like I'm stupid to not take advantage of the recent perks for the Model Y. Or, I'm sorry, for the Cybertruck, like the 1.99% financing, the free supercharging with the Foundation Series, the, um, what is it, the free full self-driving that comes with the Foundation Series, all of the extra accessories, like the light bar and stuff like that, that come with the Foundation Series. And so, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, I think that that is going to be my next vehicle. And unfortunately, the way that I think about it, when I look at that truck, is like, I, I immediately think, like, what are other people going to think? And I'm usually one to really not care what other people think. I mean, I'm literally here making videos about a car. I could easily get made fun of for this exact video that I'm making. I've made YouTube videos my entire life. Back when I was in high school, making videos when it wasn't the cool thing to do. Like, now I feel like being a content creator is kind of cool. But I was doing it back when you would get made fun of in school for playing too many video games or you know, going and, uh, and, uh, making videos that you post on YouTube and stuff like that when now it's like the norm. And so part of me like doesn't care. Like I love technology. I love being on the bleeding edge of technology. I look at the Cybertruck as not like this status symbol of being like a, a political, uh, a political statement or being, um, you know, like that I have money, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like I'm getting way too deep now, but regardless, I look at the Cybertruck for what it is. It's a super rugged version of a Tesla that I really enjoy. And it has a lot of really great cutting edge features that other trucks don't like, I can't go and get another electric vehicle, another electric truck that does what the Cybertruck can. Sure. There might be better options out there that have better range, a better charging curve and things like that. But I just want to continue to stay inside of Tesla's ecosystem. I want to still be able to like take advantage of full self driving, make these videos, take a look at what hardware four offers because the Cybertruck will have hardware four and my model Y has hardware three. Now, another unfortunate thing is my model. Did I say model three? I meant model Y. My model Y is, I think I might like to break even point. So I owe about $26,000 on this car. The quote that Tesla gave me to buy it from me with my high mileage of like 86,000 miles 
was twenty one thousand. Um, I've got a car payment coming up. I'm on a three year car loan, so thirty six months. My car payment is like seventeen hundred dollars a month. I wanted to get this paid off as fast as possible, and it's looking like it's kind of the right thing to do. At least I'm kind of thanking myself that I did this because. When, if I was doing, let's say, a 60 month loan, I would have way more that I owe on the car. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I just got to make it work. I got to figure it out, right? Obviously, like, it's not just a easy purchase to go and buy something that's uh, $100,000. But when you look at the actual things you're getting with the truck, if there is a point where I want to buy the Cybertruck in the future, why would I not do it now? Take advantage of all of the promotional features. I mean, because I don't think you could get anything better. Good interest rate, free supercharging, full self-driving with the foundation series, all of the little upgrades. It seems like a no-brainer to me. Um, I'm going to end this video here. This has been the full first drive on version 12.6.4, and it's done great. I mean, this is just one of the worst roads ever, and... I look and I'm making this video and I now see that I'm actually going to be at my destination in five minutes. And so it is really cool that being on a car that drives itself is like a time warp. You jump in, it does its thing, you end up at your destination. And I say it every single time, but I just cannot wait for full self-driving to be unsupervised so that I can work in my car. I can answer emails. I can answer text messages. I can play games if I want to. I can do something that doesn't require me to actually look at the road so thank you guys for watching if you're interested in more full self-driving videos and other stuff tesla related please feel free to subscribe and let me know your thoughts on the cybertruck like do you own one do you think about buying one let me know down below and i'll catch you guys in the next one